Oh, right. Yes. Uh, that was going to be, it took too long to explain that joke, so I'm just going to go right into it. I didn't bring a laptop because I thought I'd use yours. Uh, so tune your browser to practicaltypography.com. Uh, and while you do that, one of the reasons I wanted to come to the conference, and thank you, Asuma, for letting me talk, uh, is just to say thank you to the Racket developers. I only di uh, discovered Racket earlier this year, so uh, Matthew Flatt and, and Jay and Matthias and everyone who works on it, uh, just a tremendous tool and uh, a wonderful discovery. And thank you for answering all my dumb questions on the mailing list this year. Uh, if you have any dumb questions about typography, I owe you, so <laughs> please feel free. Okay, have you got this on your screen? Um, the first word on the screen is Butterick. That's me, Matthew Butterick. I'm from Los Angeles. Uh, as Asumu said, I'm a, a typographer, a designer, a writer, a writer about typography. Uh, and the website you see in front of you, uh, I made in Racket. Uh, it was the only way I could figure out how to do this uh, because I kind of consider myself a pretty bad programmer. And I just say that not to be hard on myself, but you know, we've got a lot of child prodigies here, some adult prodigies. So I'm not in your league. But, um, you know, Racket actually makes me feel like a, a good programmer, and I think that's a good thing. Um, in fact, I, I really, I, I mean, I've done a lot of programming in my life because you, know, you might not know this, but, you know, type, uh, typeface design in particular is maybe the part of uh, the design world that uh, most overlaps code. There are a lot of type designers who, who, uh, who do code because it's the only way to make certain parts of our job tolerable. Uh, or possible. And, and to me, that's, that's really the thing. For me, programming has always been a way, though I'm not you know, writing code for other people, I'm writing code for myself. And it's you know, where other designers or writers might approach a problem and say, well, that's just impossible. I say, ah, no, but I can program my way out of this. And, and thus I do. So uh, Racket, I, I really have enjoyed programming in Racket because more than other languages, you know, I almost feel like Racket because it's so uh, it, concise w when it can be and, and flexible. It's almost like holding up a parabolic mirror to my brain right it's like if I don't understand the problem it's like the code looks like crap right so uh, it's sort of how I know that things are going well and I don't get that feeling from every uh, programming language I've never gotten that feeling from say JavaScript right uh, that's just eternal damnation every time I touch it in fact here's a rule of thumb that I've come up with and, and you can use this I think it'll help in your career if the O'Reilly company publishes a book called blank the good parts the <laughs> The thing that's in the blank is evil, okay? And they have one called JavaScript, the good parts. They also have one called HTML and CSS, the good parts. Evil, right? Uh, I'm waiting for like pestilence, the good parts. I think that's coming out next year. So what a coincidence though that JavaScript, HTML, and CSS are what you need to make web pages. So, and I've been doing web pages for a long, long time. And so it's like surrounded by evil. And I know that those of you, you know, your programmers, you think, oh, like making web pages is a boring problem. You know, it's funny, but you know, a lot of the, the tools available to what you might call you know, your garden variety writers and, and designers really haven't uh, advanced that, that far in the last 15 years. And you know, it's, it's almost a badge of honor if you're a web developer to say, hey, I, I hand coded this HTML. I mean, that's like saying, I pushed my car to work. I mean, I don't, I, okay, you got to work, but I'm, I'm not gonna be impressed. So anyways, my idea for a while though has been, I really wanted, I kept thinking like, gosh, why can't we have books on the web, right? Not ebooks that, that Jeff Bezos wants, not the ebooks that Apple wants. It's just books on the web. And I'm not talking about blogs or websites, like really good, you know, nice reading books that have a lot of the virtues of, of you know, that we used to like from printed books, but also, you know, tap into everything that the web can do well. Um, and I sort of started, uh, you know, exploring this idea, and I, and I kind of reached this this concept. I was like, you know, I want the book to be, be to be software, really, and have all the capabilities of software. I want to have source code for my book, and I want it to be sort of a combination of, you know, have have uh, data storage properties, you know, that I can have the text there s sitting there, but also have programming properties, so that if I want to add you know, programming logic to the text, I, I can do that, that that's an option. So being a good, bad programmer, I set out on this project. I didn't use Markdown. Some people would say, why not use Markdown? Just because Markdown is, is too limiting. I mean, it, Markdown's great if all you need are the things that Markdown knows how to mark down, but uh, my brain is bigger than Markdown. So I needed something a little more flexible. And the first version of this, it was in Python, and it I actually got to know the Lexiac compiler, if anybody's ever worked with that and did that in Python and compile it to XML. And it worked, and it was like one of the worst things I've ever done. I mean, I was happy that it worked, but it was, it was awful. And I said, you know, this is not, not gonna, gonna work. So um, somehow I ran into this uh, article on the internet that said, you know, XML 
and Lisp, they're actually secretly the same, like S expressions, and, and they're just different ways of notating the same thing. And I thought, could that be true? Could, could Lisp be the answer? Well, I looked into common Lisp. That definitely wasn't the answer. Uh, I looked into Scheme. That wasn't the answer. And then I looked into Racket, and I thought, well, these people, uh, this might be the answer. Clearly, some much smarter people than me have looked at this problem. And then I got to Scribble, and I'm like, ah, here, here is where, this is where we're talking about. So, uh, yeah, the, the website you see in front of you, uh, I, so I made, built this system. I call the system Pollen. There's no rhyme or reason to the name. I just what I called it. Um, and I, I use it to make the, 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 the website you see in front of you. So what is Pollen? Uh, Pollen is essentially, well, it's, it's, it's multiple parts. I wouldn't call it a, a programming language per se. It's more like a, a dialect of Scribble with some extra racket add-ons. Um, so I started with, with, with Scribble, but you know, one thing about Scribble, you know, because it's oriented toward technical documentation, I really just wanted to live in a world of, of X expressions and feel like you know, I can just flow right through to XML if I want. Um, I, what I did is I, I took out the, the Scribble decoder and just kind of ignored its whole uh, object hierarchy and so on. And just really, I'm in a world of pure X expressions. Uh, there are still hooks for a decoder, but you know, instead of, of having this one monolithic decoder for every document, you know, it can be customized depending on, on the, the work you're, you're working on. Um, I also made it a, a permissive model of markup. And by that, I mean I made it so that you don't have to define a tag or a function before you use it. And for me, you know, as a writer, this is really important because I don't want to be writing, 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 and just have that idea like, oh, I want to tag this and then have the compiler complain. I've never seen that before. So essentially, everything that in, in the, the Pollen language is treated as a valid tag and passes through. And this kind of just lets me do the great lazy thing of, and I'll figure that function out later, and I'll figure that function out later. Um, so what it results in, though, is that this, this ends up being the source code for my book. And I've just got the text in there. And it almost looks like, it's, it kind of looks like a, a, a scribble document, really. Um, what other changes did I make? Uh, thanks to uh, the Racket developers, they uh, uh, upgraded Racket so you no longer have to use the at sign for at expressions. You can use any uh, Unicode character, so thank you. Uh, so I use a diamond character because I consider that very uh, slick. Then there's also a, a preprocessor based on the Scribble text language, which you know, just handles things like CSS and uh, HTML templates. But again, the point is, isn't it great that I can just link into the same uh, racket functions and variables that I've already set up for the, the main pages. Uh, it consists of a set of little libraries for handling you know, some of the boring stuff. And it's some not so boring stuff, like I implemented uh, Frank Leong's uh, hyphenation algorithm for tech into, uh, in, in Racket, and I use that in Pollen to provide hyphenation. You know, you know, CSS hyphenation is pretty spotty, but I actually get hyphenation on every web browser because everything's you know, uh, uh, done with soft hyphens that are uh, implemented algorithmically. And then I created a little development environment using the, the Racket web server. So essentially, I just fire up this server, and I go and I edit my source code, and I go over and I, I reload the page, and I can see immediately how that looks. And at the end, when I'm satisfied with everything, uh, you know, I just push one button and it, it burns all the pages. It's a little bit like uh, Greg's idea of a you know, static blog. But you know, with more features, again, for, for writing a full book, uh, and you know, then there's other features to connect. Uh, I'm you know, glossing over, I've only got 10 minutes. But, um, so th there you go. That's the general idea. You can see the site. You can see for yourself. I mean, I made the whole site with Racket plus my brain. Of course, programmers who write to me who really like it, they're like, so you made it with Racket, right? It's like, and my brain, but, but Racket. I'm like, yeah, yeah, Racket. Racket was a secret ingredient. Yeah. So if, if there's some refracted glory, that's great. But you know, uh, what? No, but, but you know, one of the things that sort of accidentally ended up happening with this, I mean, it's, it's like I've been making HTML pages for a long time and I've hated every method, but finally I made a method that I liked. So I'm like, great, this solves this evil problem. And not only that, it's nice because it sort of, it, ha it kind of accidentally has this nice learning curve, again, because it's based on my own laziness, where, you know, to get started with this pollen thing and make a big website, it doesn't ask that much of you. It's, it's almost, you know, like, like using Markdown. But then as you want to do a little more, you can add it and add it, add it. And finally, it's just, you're just doing Racket again. So uh, I don't know if, if it can be, I, I want to, you know, uh, tune it up, improve the performance a bit, and put it out there as a Racket package. Uh, and hopefully it will induce some other uh, people, some, some worse programmers than me, namely web developers, uh, to start doing things a, a little bit differently. But again, uh, I, I have uh, loved my experience with Racket because it was truly the only tool that was going to be able to do this job. So again, my thanks to the developers and uh, thanks to you all for hearing me. <laughs> oh, yes. So that we can make it 
make it look beautiful to other people other than just us. Okay, you, all of you are witnesses. I owe the Racket developer team. So whatever you guys want, you got it. Just ask me. No problem. My pleasure. Jay took mine, but uh, I, was, I was looking for your site. It is elegant, readable, and it's beautiful. And uh, I just wanted to uh, thank you for showing us the original vision for the web actually works. Uh, yeah. Oh, and by the way, you know, uh, I don't. I'm, I designed all the typefaces on on the site uh, too, and uh, th that's not something I did with Racket. But there's an Italian developer named Daniel Capo who has uh, ported a b whole bunch of font technology over to Racket, and he can do font interpolation in the command line now. It's pretty neat. Uh, the package is called S Font, S F O N T, and it's up on GitHub. And he's got a, a couple videos of it. It's pretty cool. So um, take a look. Oh, let's oh take sorry. This, let's take this offline. All right. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you.